Hi everyone and welcome to the second Cut1 tutorial the graphics. Today we are going to explore the new graphics feature in Cut1. This tutorial is divided in two parts. In the first part we are going to make this figure by using the GUI. So I will show you the new graphics feature, the new menu uh, to have better representation of our macromolecules and map. In the second part we are going to write a Python script by using CUT to make the same figure. Nowadays, CUT can be imported as a module in Python 3, so I will show you all the CUT function in Python to make the figure. Before we start, if you are unfamiliar with CUT1, I already uh, released the tutorial called CUT1 The Basics, which will give you an overview on the basic navigation in CUT1 and also there is a list of very useful keyboard and mouse shortcuts so please watch that tutorial first I'm going to demonstrate CUT1 today on a Mac as you probably know CUT1 on Mac is very slow but a lot of work is going on to improve the navigation so in the near future, CUT1 on Mac will be much, much more faster and robust. So let's start with the first part, so using the GUI. In this tutorial, we are going to use 7P9B, which is a, the PTP code for an enzyme called arginine decarboxylase, sold by CryoEM. So uh, we are going to um, download the EM map because uh, actually um, CUT1 does not fetch the EM map. So we are going to download it from PDP. So now let's open the CUT1 window. I already resized the window by using the resize button. And let's fetch the model. and open the map that we previously downloaded from PDP. The first thing that we are going to do is to increase the radius of the map because we want that the map cover entirely the model. So draw map parameters and we are going to increase the radius to 99. As I told you before, this is a decamer, so we have 10 chains and we want to customize a map for each chain. So the first thing that we are going to do is to use the Cryo-EM module and mask the map by chains, so that at the end we can have for each chain, a map that we are going to customize. Let's open the Display Manager and we can see that now we have masked map for all the chain. If we undisplay the original map, you can see that each map is already colored in a different way. And now we want to make each map masked for each chain as a surface. So we need to click on the properties of each masked map for each chain and tick the surface option. This is, can be a little bit tedious, but I will show you that there is a, a good function in Python that can make as a surface all the chains.
So now let's increase the clip in front by pressing one on the keyboard. Before we proceed with the customization, I'm going to save the actual view by using add view and then I will save the view because if I put my molecule in a particular orientation or for example I'm looking to a ligand or a residue and I put it in a particular orientation I need to know the view parameters because if I want to write a Python script I need to add this information in the script so let's save the view for this molecule and the information in this file are going to be used in the Python script. So now let's change color for each map. From the display manager, let's click on properties, map color, and I already choose the colors for each map for each chain, but you can choose whatever color you like. You can explore different color palette. So I'm going just to insert the code uh, in the color name window for each map but please feel free to uh, explore different color different shades and have fun so let's do this for each chain map so I'm going to insert the color code for each chain Okay, so this is our result after colored each maps. As you can see, the image is a little bit flat. So now we're going to explore a new feature in Qt1 called the Shader Preference menu. So from Edit, click on Shader Preference menu. And from the menu, you will get the dialog of the shader parameters. By default, Qt uses the fancy lighting mode the basic and the plain modes are more straightforward and do not use the frame buffers. The basic mode in fact uses lines for the model so that could can draw it faster. You can also increase and decrease the brightness. There is also a gamma option so that the colors component can be varied non-linearly. High values of gamma make the image bright and pastel and lower values make it darker and more saturated. We can also use the screen space ambient occlusion. The ambient occlusion approximates the shadow when the object is uniformly lit. They do a good job by highlighting, for example, internal cavities. We can also increase or decrease the shadows.
the shadow softness control uh, is used to control how much the shadow texture is blurred before being mapped to the molecule. The texture resolution controls how big the shadow texture is on the GPU. The screen space ambient occlusion bias can be used to reduce the artifact. We can also use the depth blur and blur focus depth. Increasing it is going to defocus our model. So we can also play with the blur strength. All right, our figure is ready. Unfortunately for now, it's not possible to make a screenshot in CUT, but we are trying to solve this issue. This is the end of the first part. Now we are going to move in the second part. So I will show you how to write a Python script by using the CUT function to make the same figure.